let's go ahead and try talking about a nice linear gradient series right now. What we're looking at right over here on this cash flow is a classic linear gradient series. It absolutely fits with the definitions. And I want to point out that the, the definition that you have for linear gradient series a little bit different from what you'll see for the others. The first characteristic that you'll see that's common with the others is that there is uh, zero net cash flow in time period zero. So if you look at time period zero right over here, zero net cash flow. The thing that's unusual about the linear gradient though is that time period one also has zero net cash flow. Um, and, and that's a, an odd characteristic, but it's one it, it's fairly important because without having that zero net cash flow in time period one, eventually when you find out what the uh, equation for present value is, there'll be some stray negative one signs hiding around there that you just simply don't want to cope with. Now, getting down to the definition itself, linear gradient is characterized by this fixed amount, capital G, which determines how you're going to see changes in cash flow over time. So in this case, what we're doing is we're seeing that the cash flow starts at zero in time period one, and then what happens is it goes up by capital G, $10, every single time period thereafter until it gets to the last time period, five, which is our, our capital N that we have listed down here. Now, what I have over on the right-hand side is just a, a brute force calculation of what the present worth is. So if you're going to look at one of these individual equations, all I'm doing is taking B4, which is that cash flow that you will receive in time period two, and I'm dividing it by one plus the interest rate, and that's what that B10 is supposed to be. It's the interest rate that's right down here in uh, a cell B10. And then we're raising that to the power of A4, which is the time period that we're in. And so this is just brute force discounting of that value that's in time period two. This is brute force discounting of that value that's in time period uh, three, time period four, time period five. And all I've done right there in order to calculate the present worth is just added all those values up. And so that's a brute force way of calculating the present worth of this stream of values. Well, what I've also done right down here is I've used the equations you'll find in the back uh, part of the book, which calculates what present worth is in one step using uh, a simplification that is similar to what you saw for the constant series. And all I've done here is taken in cell B11, which is that growth component, capital G, and what you're doing is you're multiplying it by 1 plus i to the n, less the product of the interest rate and n, less 1, and all that is divided by uh, the interest rate squared times 1 plus the interest rate to the power of n. And so that will also give you a present worth calculation of this series.